A foreign expert's take on the latest developments in Pyongyang. Let's speak now with Associate Professor Robert E. Kelly. He's from the Department of Political Science and Diplomacy at Busan National University. Now, Professor Kelly, what can you tell us about Mr. Hong's position in Kim Jong-un's closest circles? Sure. Since the elimination of Jang Song Tech, the uncle, which you mentioned a couple of years ago, about a year and a half ago, right? There's been a sort of back and forth between Huang and Che, the two that you mentioned. Both of them actually have a past, as you might imagine. They have a background in the party and the military. There's sort of a different emphasis for each of them, um, and their backgrounds are in things like security and economics, which are really sort of the central problems that North Korea has now. What, what have you heard of him as as a person? Is he well known uh, in the circle? They are, right? I mean, to, well, we don't know what the North Koreans think, right? I mean, it's really hard for us to know what North Korean opinion is. I mean, the way we get a lot of this information is we look at the information that is provided by what's called the Korean Central News Agency. That's the North Korean media machine, right? And then we make judgments about who is important, who is not, by how close they are to Kim, what kind of foreign travel do they go on. You mentioned South Korea, for example. You know, the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II is coming up, and we'll see if Kim goes to Moscow, who goes with him. And so that's how we make these judgments. I mean, it's very unclear. It's very much like what they used to call criminology during the Cold War. We try to make judgments about who is influential by where they are and, you know, what time they show up at the meeting and things like that. Um, there, there's been a seesawing of power struggle between um, Hwang byung ha and uh, Choi Ryong-hae. So where is Choi Ryong-hae in the hierarchy now? Yeah, well, right now the argument is that he's sort of, sort of on his way down, right? The two of them represent, respectively, I would argue, the party and the military. Um, the Korean Workers' Party and the Korean People's Army. And those are the two most important sort of bulwarks of the regime, right? The repressive apparatus and the ideological apparatus that argues that North Korea is the sort of unique state and the Kim monarchy is so important. And my guess is, you know, again, this is criminology, is that Kim Jong-un, the leader, is actually trying to balance these two figures and demoting one at one time and bringing another one up the other time. And they're sort of kept in this constant tension because what he doesn't want is a very consolidated sort of second person a, you know, a real clear rival who eventually might push him out of the way. So that's my guess why it seems like it's a seesaw. We sort of discuss these guys every six months, and they're up and down and up and down. It's probably proposed this whole back and forth. Mm. And we know that the parliamentary meeting comes ahead of uh, the founder, Kim Il-sung's birthday this, uh, this month. What significant announcements can we expect from this parliamentary meeting? Yeah, the North Koreans, the parliament in North Korea is called the Supreme People's Assembly. It meets once or twice a year, and it's usually a point for the North Koreans, again, for the news media machine, to provide sort of an image of all the leaders in a room, and they're talking, and, you know, the sort of elites are all there in one place. And you get usually some kind of discussion to, about economics. The Supreme People's Assembly is really sort of more like an economic outfit. There are sort of other parts of the North Korean government responsible for nuclear weapons and security. Um, and and this, the SPA has been a place in the past where we've seen discussions about, for example, how the North Koreans will balance economic development, which is now really important because there was a terrible famine in North Korea like 20 years ago, right? But the North wants to balance that with nuclear weapons, and that's, you know, which is also quite expensive. And so that's the kind of announcements that we usually get. I would imagine we'll hear something on Friday, maybe Saturday, and the days after this, there'll be some kind of discussion about North Korea's heroic socialist growth and something like that. All right, Professor Kelly, thank you very much for your time. I've been speaking with Associate Professor Robert E. Kelly from Pusan National University.